Welcome back to Florida. Have you ever uh, been in one of these here right hand drive cars, Mike? I don't think I have, you know. We only spent like basically a whole month together. Uh, remember? Uh, remember? <laughs> remember? Remember? This was a great time, dude. Such a good time. <laughs> so we are taking the R34 over to the warehouse today. Mike is in town. So yes. video quality is going to be way up. <laughs> Hopefully the likes on the video are going to be way up if you're excited that Mike's in town. <laughs> Um, and uh, he's gonna be helping cover all the E36 stuff. So today, uh, hopefully we're gonna get the E36 back and start working on it. In the meantime, we're gonna head over, get some sandwiches, get some Starbucks, and you guys are gonna get to see the stuff that I'm always too lazy to vlog in the morning because I'm, I'm a creature in the morning. <laughs> Part of the curse of this R34 is that, I can't turn the volume down either, Mike, we're stuck. We're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> I have one CD. There's, there's no aux input or anything. So I've been listening to the same Pierce of Ale CD for the entire time that I've owned this car. First world problems. Big E brother. Yo, that is Florida right there. We got trucks up in Connecticut, but we don't have those stacks, bro. <laughs> Dude, that's bigger than the freaking piping for my heat at my house. <laughs> what is that, a 10 inch? <laughs> you got, your boy got 10 inch tips. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what just happened? All right, so long, I don't know if I cover this in the video. When I got the R34, it was detonating. I don't know if it was because of old gas or if it is because the car's got a mines chip DCU and has too much timing for our gas here. Whole big conspiracy over whether like Japanese gas is better than ours. Regardless, I have race gas in it right now, like MS-109, <laughs> just so it doesn't detonate. And it's really expensive and I'm sad because I ordered our sandwiches to the wrong public, so now we're gonna waste $500 in gas to go pick up our sandwiches. <laughs> no exaggeration. What do you think about the wing, Mike? It looks so good. It looks good. So as of right now, we are picking up the E36 uh, around like 5 or 6 p.m. So the first thing I want to do, I just want to get the shop as clean and as much room as we can because since we're going to be building this car over the next two weeks, I want to start clean and start organized. So I'm dismounted tires. We're going to pull the trans off the spare 2J, uh, get that out of the way, hopefully get it in the back of the shop and start clearing off all this stuff so we've got plenty of room to work. So we'll go to this place called Three Natives and we'll get smoothies and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I feel really uncomfortable when I order there though, because their names are real weird. Like we got we got a pump and a straw nana and a bird. <laughs> and it just sounds dirty when I order and it makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I just want to add a full disclaimer. Do not look at these shirts right here in the video, because these aren't out yet. These shirts right here. They don't they don't look very similar to this, but don't don't show this in the video. No. They're not available yet. No. Exclusive. This was a, like, ignore the, 
I, Mike, please don't include that in the video. Please don't include that in the video. I'll be very upset with you. We have this box in addition to the two other things that you already know what they are, but I'm filming this in the, in the past because this came first. We got some more decorations. Ha! Wow, that's actually way cooler than I thought it was. Woo! That's a sick decoration. A center lock carbon wheel. I don't even remember what car this came off of. I kind of want to try running on something. Just curved a little bit. Dang. That's super cool. That's super cool. Pump. Look at all the goodies. Goodie Sue? What's this? Oh. My guy. Another Porsche mug. Woo! <laughs> oh. I'm excited. I hope this is a cool color. I love colors. Green! This will match my new hood. Sick. <laughs> is there more? Look, I got a jacket. Bro, dude, I'm going to look like a G. I'm so excited. We have matching Porsche jackets, bro. <gasps> Three of them. Wow. Look at all this. Thanks, hey. guys. In all fairness, these don't really look that bad, but new is good. Looks like they'll just pop right out, I think. As if there's something I'm missing. I wanna break it, bro. <laughs> aggressive. Oh! Not my R34. I'm a little clip down. Oh, it broke. Oh, no. So sad. Imagine how much of a bummer it would be if it was like the wrong one. <laughs> if it wasn't for the right car, you know? Mm -hmm. It looks better? Looks so much better. This one's, this one's very faded. Woo! Fresh! That was easy. Bang. Such a nice change. Yeah. So good. We're rolling out. We got the big rig all set up. We got to drive down to Vero Beach to go over to Bell Raceworks. Go pick up the E36 with the cage, brother. We have a situation. There's four windshields in the back. We have to go to my house and drop them off. Shulman's in back whining. Now I know why he wants to drive this house. He's going to sit back here. You think I would have sat in the back now of the windshield? Now I have a very expensive wind a blanket on me. <laughs> Everything's about money with you, Shulman. Jeez. Money? What? Expensive is expensive that Louis Vuitton slippers, Gucci <laughs> underwear. <laughs> These are ridiculous. Go bro. away. <laughs> hey, Mike, remember? 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 Here we go. Remember. It's not funny now that Shulman does it. <laughs> That's the point. Look at this chip. Thanks, Pat. Oh, I just farted. Jesus. <laughs> Yo, thanks, dude. Yeah. Yo, remember when it didn't smell in here? Alright, so we're here at Bell Raceworks. This is Arthur. Uh, you guys might not be super, super familiar with Bell Raceworks, but they've done the cage on Matt's car, on Ginger's car, on Ethan's car. car. Who else in our friend group? Steven. Steven's car. Kyle. Pretty much every car at OSW has a Bell Raceworks cage. Ryan, Sylvia. But you might be more familiar with these. It's the man behind the diff races. Hey. Also does sick cages. So uh, I'm gonna let him kind of like give you guys a walk around on the cage. You, I gave you like not a lot of time to do this at all, and I'm really sorry. No time. Yeah, what has it been like? Three days, four days? It's been three days of work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the like the quality of the cage and how it came out is, I'm like super, super, super insane. happy with it. Yeah, I'm glad we went with Tig. Yeah, it just looks so much better. My 13's migged, and my 13 like is decent, but this is this is sick. Like this is more comparable to the level of the cage in my 15. We got the fiberglass doors, so we kicked out the bars like we wanted. These came out so the good too. Yeah. Uh, kept everything pretty much straight, so it's light. You don't have extra bracing, no extra X bars, nothing else. So yeah, I, light. I didn't want a very heavy cage. And you, you custom bent all the stuff yourself too. Yeah, right? it all gets bent and then 
notched. One thing with cages, um, a lot of places will install like an Injuku cage or a Prebec cage, but usually when you do that, the cages don't fit as tight because they want to leave room for uh, kind of air and stuff. Mm. Where when you make your own cage, like you can get it dumb tight. And if you're maybe not so much on an E36, it doesn't matter as much, but on like an S chassis where you have lots of issues with like helmet clearance and stuff, um, that extra inch or half an inch can make a huge difference. So the gussets we put uh, the LZ logo in the gussets. So cool. For a while, like people would ask me, like, who do I recommend to go do a cage? And you know, Alberto did mine ages ago, but he refuses to do cages anymore. He hates it so much. What is it about cages that people don't like? I know for him, he would like. I don't think he wore a respirator, so I think he would just get sick every time he did a cage. It's not that bad. It's it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. And you're there for like a while in a really uncomfortable spot and you just can't leave until it's done. Yeah. But once you figure it out, where you can like kind of figure out where everything needs to be, where it needs to bend, where it needs to notch, then it just it just works better. So uh, what exactly is this tubing? Like thickness wise, like what's it made out of? FD spec, inch and a half, DOM, 095 wall, mild steel. FD requires the same for chromoly, so there was really no point for weight wise, so we just stuck with mild steel. Just to be transparent, this isn't like intended to be an FD car, but as a rule of thumb, a lot of people will build cages to FD spec in it's, case they ever want to sell it or someone wants to use it for a pro-am car. If you're going to do it, why not? Like, right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't make any sense to not make it legal. The biggest thing for me, like it, it wasn't always a rule with FD, but the intrusion bars, um, if you ever get into an accident when you're drifting, one thing is a little bit different from like road racing. Um, the wheels are very often turned and the wheel can push into the cabin. So the intrusion bars are these little braces or whatever you would call them, these bars that run in here. And that'll kind of save your legs if you have the event of a wheel pushing into the cabin and stuff. So because like, that's your feet. Like you get stuck in there, you can't get out. To be fair, I mean, that's what happened in my wrecked chaser. Like, yeah. if someone's feet were in there, you know, that could have smushed them. People always say, oh, your cars don't roll over. They do. <laughs> they yeah. do. There was a car that rolled at OSW. Really? How wild. Yeah. And, uh, at OSW, a parking lot. It hit the barrier and it, like, sucked it up. It rolled over and uh, the cage held up. If you didn't have a cage, you'd be in pretty rough shape. So they're both safe. So cages are definitely the way to go. For me, it was like I... I have the 13 that's caged, but that car is so pretty that like I never want to drive it in any sort of comp or anything because I'm scared for it to get crashed. Um, and then my only real other caged car would be the 15, and that car I can't risk at anything other than FD. Um, so this will be a really good kind of, I don't want to say thrash car because that makes it sound like more like a missile, but a car to care less about but be able to go drive the tracks that need a cage and have a little bit more horsepower. Like everything goes to the, the right points, like the bars in the back are going to the mm -hmm. frame, like instead of the... the wheel well or something you know and then so these little points here that you build up if you wouldn't do this like does anyone ever just build a cage and just attach it to the floor oh yeah all the time i was gonna say because that's how that's how all the bolting cages are usually yeah and that's kind of well we do this because the trick is you do a big like a standoff or something like that so you can drop it and get the tops of the welds ah, on the roll bars that makes sense so and the drag car stuff we just do like a flat plate most of the time and drill a hole and then drop it through the floor mm -hmm. but stuff like this it's just easier to do a box what what would your like if someone came to you and needed a cage on what would your like typical turnaround be because you did you did mats pretty quick too did like mine in it's, two weeks it's not bad it's all in getting it timed right so like if we had an appointment set up and everything like that it's anywhere between a week to a week and a half and that's one thing on. you do like amazing work and amazing time frames yeah right. well I, I will say like the the biggest thing for me also with cages is like Everyone that always wanted to go get the car cage, it was like, all right, their car is gone for three months. Mm -hmm. Most shops don't know how to manage um, time well, and they'll take in more work that they can handle. So that's that's like, that was the biggest thing for me because like everyone was like, yeah, he'll get it done fast. That's why, more, that's I didn't I didn't mean for it to be three days, but it can be done. This, this, the yeah. more prep done before it gets to me, the faster it gets done. It took a little bit of time, but like not as much as if we were doing all the extra X bracing and gussets all over the place and stuff like that. But since it's nice and light and simple, mm -hmm. it wasn't that. One thing I do want to do, uh, we're going to cut like a foot of this tubing and see roughly what it weighs. Because you said you use about 60 feet of tubing in the car? About, yeah, between 55 and 60 feet. So we could see like in theory what weight was added to the car with a cage and then we'll know when we weigh the car what it would have weighed without a cage. <laughs> so this is what it is. I'll see if you can do the math the fastest. All right, so we have... One pound, seven and a half ounces. So... Times, on the heavy end, say 60 feet. So it'd be... Let's say one and a half pounds 
Ninety? Yeah. It was one point seven five, not one point five. Well, one point five pounds. That's ounces. Oh, I thought so it was one point. Seven I thought it was one point seven five pounds. No, one one pound seven and a half ounces. Oh, okay. If it was one point seven five pounds, I'd be right. <laughs> That's ninety pounds. It's not that bad. Plus gussets and four boxes, you're about a hundred. Yeah. But we saved one hundred twenty pounds by taking off the doors. Yeah, you don't need those. I'm not gonna drive the doors. No. Yeah, where are the fiberglass ones? Weigh weigh them yet? No, they're light. Yeah, we have fiberglass doors. Surprise! I'll show oh, you yeah. when we get back to the shop. No, it's all good. <laughs> I was doing the typical Adam thing where I was torn. I was like, oh, but like I kind of want windows and like what if I want to drive it on the street? Because I do that with every car, but it's like, you know what? For once, we're just not going to worry about that. No windows. Race car. Smoothie run? Smoothie, dude, we could do smoothie <laughs> run. If we do smoothie runs in zero, this thing will be like a dream. <laughs> it's all about the elbow room. Yeah. So another cool thing, I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen or when it might happen, but we've been talking about possibly doing a solid rear end setup in z -Roy. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add any insight or kind of what you're thinking for that. A solid axle nine inch uh -huh. with F or Fox body pickup points and a chromoly subframe that bolts into the whole stock Z deal. If you can make my car do wheelies. Wheelies aren't fast. I just want to do wheelies. If I could do wheelies <laughs> on the street, like I'm not, I'm, oh, <laughs> bro, imagine, don't, imagine. don't let him do wheelies ever. <laughs> No, 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 no. I want to be able to just like roll on it in second and pick the front wheels up. <laughs> That's my goal. Just get a 600. Hydraulics. We'll do hydraulics in the front. I'll hit a switch and go. <laughs> I could time it. So like when I hit the throttle, I'll program it in the ECU. So it also bumps the front hydraulics. And <laughs> maybe you'll be able to do a full back. Know, let's find a cutlass on Facebook Marketplace and rob all the hydraulics out of it. <laughs> I'm pumped on this though. All right, we're good. I go, hey, Mike, you got the candy? Oh. I think you thought I had my camera. Oh my Second try is charm. Thanks, brother. All right, guys, it's about midnight. We made it back to the shop, and uh, we were going to unload the car, but I think we're just going to start fresh tomorrow. I know one thing I did promise you guys was that we were going to do a big reveal of the new team member. Uh, however, we weren't back in time to do that, so it's gonna have to wait till the next video. Um, also, that whole giveaway thing that I was doing on Instagram, on the LGMFG page, the condition was it needed 100,000 followers, and it has like 15,000 comments, but only like 5,000 people followed it. So, until it has 100,000 followers, I'm just gonna keep that turbo. I think, hey Mike, do you want that turbo? I want that turbo, dude. Right. But anyway, uh, I do appreciate all you guys that did follow and comment. It's really cool. It's a cool piece between me and Alberto. And I want 100,000 followers and subscribers. <laughs> Subscribe, comment, like, rate. It's raining. We're going to go get some sleep. Star fresh tomorrow. Hey, how was your day, Mike? It was, it was pretty good. It was all chill. Right, pretty good. Today, it's going to be better. Tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow. Today. Bye. When you say